Hello again, welcome back. And we are going to be joined now by our third expert insight speaker. The German fast track reimbursement for digital health applications has been in operation for around a year now. And what are the lessons that could be learned from that? Well, Marco Wendel from the Medical Valley um, Digital Health Application Center in Germany is joining us to tell us just that. Hi everybody, I'm Marcos, the CEO of DMAC, and I welcome everybody here to this final event from EIT Health's Catapult. It's a pleasure for me to be here as I was uh, long years part of the D uh, EIT Health's Catapult and working together with Anna for all the teams. And now I'm here as an expert, so pretty exciting for me. I want to give you or share some expert insights today on the German DIGA model and the learnings from one year of bigger experience across Germany. I want to take you back a few years, um, three years, four years, um, how the situation in Germany was. So Germany was already uh, always seen as a kind of big market for digital health and med tech companies. Due to the pure size, so Germany is spending around 12% of its GDP in health. So uh, due to the pure size of Germany and the spending, so big market. But what is in for digital health companies? Looking on the digital health index, you see Germany pretty poor. So really a backbencher, so not really digitalized healthcare system. Estonia is better, Denmark is better, Spain is better, England is better, everybody is better than Germany, or was better than Germany. Problem seen, problem solved. In 2019, our former Federal Minister of Health, Jens Spahn, yeah, introduced the Digital Health Care Act, the so-called in German Digitale Versorgunggesetz said it was a, or is an act, a law that uh, yeah, fosters the digitalization of the German healthcare system. And one special interesting uh, topic was included in this uh, Digital Healthcare Act and that's the uh, app on prescriptions, the so-called EGAS. This was come into force in December 20, uh, 2019 and more or less opened a market for access to 73 million insured persons. And uh, the 73 million insured persons in the statutory health insurance system. So one market access scheme for 73 million people. It fostered patient-centered applications in the healthcare sector that are supporting disease management must be medical devices of lower risk class and uh, are prescribable by physicians and psychotherapists to patients with ICD-10 codes. So no primary prevention, but really just uh, topics for disease management. And for those uh, manufacturers that are fulfilling this uh, medical device uh, of lower risk class and uh, patient centeredness, and the focus on ICD-10 code, uh, the development scheme, or the Stiga scheme was made. The problem is you just have to, or if it is a problem, I don't know, but uh, you just have to successfully pass an application at a public body called B Farm. And when, once you have uh, passed this application, you're accepted as a DIGA and listed in the DIGA directory. So long story short, this application is, of course, not so easy. Taking a look at the B Farm's assessment procedure. So you as a, or as a manufacturers of a digital health application are working on an application together with the B Farm. They are advising, they are examining. And so you are uh, yeah, applying. If you are fulfilling all the requirements regarding security, functionality, quality, data protection, data security, interoperability, plus you can show in a positive care effect, be it a medical benefit or a structural and procedural improvement, you can be accepted to be listed in the DIGA directory. There are two ways of uh, showing this positive care effect. That's 
more or less on a kind of trend analysis where you can show, yeah, I will make this or I will meet this positive care effect. Then you can apply for this primal preliminary admission. If you can already show the, or see evidence on this positive care effects, you can apply for permanent admission. If you're applying for preliminary admission and are accepted, you have 12 months time for plausible justification of the positive care effects via a study. And once you're accepted and the study results are good, you are sent in the permanent listing. That's the DFARM's assessment procedure. Taking a look at this in Germany after one year, in total 106 DIGA applications have been successfully filed. From this 106 DIGA applications, so far just 24 made it to the DIGA directory. Another around 50 to 60 were rejected and other 24 are currently under examination. So it's a rather hard uh, evaluation process. Not everybody will make it. Here you see the 24 successful listed diggers. You see Selfa P was very successful, listed three. The other ones always won. And this is a complete mixture of ICD-10 codes from tinnitus, depression, migraine, diabetes, adipositas, oncology. These are all apps that can be prescribed by doctors. As it was a completely new digital health application market access uh, law and a complete new reimbursement scheme, there was lots of unclearness uh, at the beginning. There was, was a complete new evidence or generation scheme called positive care effects. Uh, that was the outcomes of the studies. Uh, nobody know so, uh, what a positive care effect was, and nobody knew how to show evidence. The question was also, what is a reasonable price? The manufacturer is allowed to set the price for one year completely free under a certain threshold. And yeah, the question is, oh my, uh, perhaps uh, formerly had offered uh, in a kind of freemium model, what can I, uh, what price can I set? for the reimbursement. And the other one was, as Germany was not really digitalized in healthcare, will DIGA itself be accepted? Will be uh, DIGAs as kind of medical apps be accepted as a kind of treatment method? So lots of unclearness and lots of learnings from the last years, from the last year. How to show the evidence of positive care effects? I mean, uh, as I mentioned, positive care effects were a rather new evaluation scheme. So they chose uh, for the medical benefits that are pretty well known. So the improvement of the state of health or the improvement of in the quality of life. But they also defined patient relevant improvement of structural and procedural outcomes. Like for example, the adherence or the patient safety patient autonomy, health literacy, and there's a question how to measure or show the evidence of this positive care effect. Taking a look at the last year and on the successfully passed DIGAS, it's shown that all 24 listed DIGAS uh, use randomized controlled trials to demonstrate the benefit. So 24 of 24 listed DIGAS follows this way. This is one of the more known uh, evidence generation methods. It's uh, giving a strong uh, evidence. The question is still open and this is not clear. What are the, how to measure the patient relevant improvement of structural and procedural outcome measures because there normally the RCTs don't work, but this is not proven yet. What we can say after one year is 100% use RCT. So RCT is a gold standard for evidence generation. So uh, manufacturers of DIGA that want to become uh, more or less uh, DIGA and follow this uh, DIGA application. Now, no, okay. Show the medical benefit, make an RCT and you can't make anything wrong. Second problem was, what is a reasonable price? 
I mean, I already mentioned the price can be set by the DIGA manufacturer for one year up to a maximum price. The price is somehow calculated on the basis of the manufacturer price connected to comparative prices from other countries. The maximum price is rather high. Uh, there are differences or broad range of prices that were set by the DIGA manufacturer. So from 119 euros to 743 euros. And this is per prescription. And for, in most cases, a period of 90 days use. And after this 90 days, when the treatment has not brought an effect and you get a re-prescription, then it's the same price again. And this all for one year, for the first year. Afterwards, there is a price negotiated. This will be under this manufacturer set price. But for the first year, you can go up to this maximum price. The problem was this high price uh, for an app uh, set in 75% of cases hasn't yet shown evidence because you're in this primary listing and uh, performing the study now was seen from the prescribers as uh, too high. And so, uh, so acceptance for prescribing was not so high. This was uh, been seen also by the official bodies and now they are currently arbitrating this maximum price and I think in the future it will go down. Just for one example, um, if you have a price of 400 euros and have 1000 prescriptions per month, it's just pure math, uh, so you get really high reimbursement without having any competition because you are in the system. And this is of course nice for the manufacturers. The third learning or the third question was, will DIGAS be accepted? And that's still a controversial discussion. Currently, after one year, 50,000 apps on prescriptions were, be, were done. So the pure number 50,000 is, of course, high, but not too high. Thinking about or discussing with uh, yeah, the manufacturers, they are fully okay with the number of prescriptions. Of course, 50,000 uh, for 73 million people um, is not a high number, but uh, yes, a proof of concept has been done. DIGA is somehow accepted. The question is still um, how to yeah, push these numbers. And there is still a big skepticism amongst the prescribers due to this high price and in, some, in many cases, a lack of evidence. So if uh, yeah, the evidence is shown, they are accepting also a high price. And a lack of knowledge on DIGA in general from the prescribers. So uh, not everybody knows about DIGA, not everybody knows how to prescribe DIGA after one year. So the solution is really education and training from the manufacturers that are successfully at DIGAs. They are always trying to educate and train the doctors and yeah, go uh, into discussion amongst the problems uh, with this lack of evidence and so on. And this has a positive effect now. And uh, yeah, the, the number of prescriptions are steadily rising. So what I can say is that in Germany, the scheme has more or less, or the sticker scheme has more or less brought uh, the proof of concept. So it's there. It will not go again, from my opinion. It will uh, increase the number of prescriptions will be will increase the number of diggers will increase. So uh, Germany is on a good way to use really this digital therapeutics uh, in the broad care. Germany was there a kind of forerunner and was now examined or identified by several other countries. So currently, twenty other countries are discussing the implementation of a digger related scheme. What is nice. Of course, it's great uh, to have somehow also other countries that are implementing this digital therapeutics. France, I mean, everybody could have heard of it, has announced to introduce the DIGA scheme in 2022. Lots of money put in there. So France will be the second country in Germany what has this DIGA uh, scheme. Luxembourg will follow, as far as I've heard, others are discussing. And there is currently lots of pan-European harmonization uh, talks started. 
amongst several countries, I think it's 10, that want to harmonize a Stiga uh, yeah, regulation across Europe. The general technical requirements are already harmonized. It's about MDR and GDPR. When you're fulfilling this criteria, you may sell in, in general your uh, medical device or your digital health application across Germany. The question is really, will there be someone an evidence generation scheme harmonized on European level that makes it easy for the deep manufacturers of digital health solutions when they are, uh, have shown the evidence for one market access in one country that they use this evidence also in the market access of other countries that would uh, yeah, speed up all the market entries, this would lower the costs because they don't have to make studies for each market access. This is necessary and there are currently many people thinking about together. Uh, we also as DMAC are in this working groups somehow integrated. So what is really interesting is, will there be the same standards on the evidence generation on four diggers for whole Europe? What is a missing cornerstone besides the technical requirements that uh, kind of general overview, uh, general European uh, yeah, digital health application market access scheme will be implemented across Europe? I'm pretty confident that within the next two or three years, we will have this uh, yeah, general European harmonized system and that we will have an easier market access for all digital health startups within Europe. Thanks for listening to me. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Marco. It was a pleasure to listen to you here at Catapult. Well, the Digital Health Semifinals Awards Ceremony is nearly here, but not, not just yet. We have our final Expert Insight uh, speakers, both of whom are from AstraZeneca, joining us this afternoon to inform us more about the disruptive te technologies today and how they will affect the uh, oncology landscape today and in the future. We are joined by uh, David uh, Delamonica, who is the Digital and Innovation Oncology Europe and Canada, Canada uh, of AstraZeneca. And he is joined by uh, Hassan Nakvi, who is the lead of Global Digital Health. So David and Hassan, Welcome to Catapult and over to you. So guys, I'm really happy to be with you uh, tonight. So um, uh, I'm David Delamonica. I'm heading the uh, digital and innovation for Europe. And I'm tonight with um, my friend Hassan. Thank you, David, uh, for inviting me to this. Very happy to be part of uh, this conversation. My name is Hassan Nakvi, and uh, I lead uh, digital health initiatives and strategy on the global level for AstraZeneca. So thanks so much. And so, so we are really proud to be part of uh, this, this event and uh, or this whole process with uh, Catapult and the uh, EITLs. AstraZeneca is part of, uh, of the EITLs for years. And we are proud to be part of this uh, huge European community of uh, innovators. So really the idea of, uh, of the talk today is to uh, discuss with uh, Hassan some different topics. And one of the topics that we think is uh, important for uh, all the companies that are applying for these fantastic events and prize, uh, this is really to understand how we see the, the drives of our digital transformation at AstraZeneca. So I will ask the question to Hassan because he's leading this, um, this, this component in his uh, uh, global year. So Hassan, what do, you, uh, what do you have in mind when we, we talk about the, the drive of this uh, digital transformation for uh, AstraZeneca in the oncology setting? Yeah, so that's, that's an excellent question, uh, David. Um, a couple of different things. The, the first thing, of course, first and foremost, is the timing of the conversation that we're having. We are in... Um, a hopefully a post-COVID world, uh, and COVID has uh, opened up opportunities in the digital health sphere that make discussions like this possible. So what I mean by that is there was and has been for a fair amount of time 
uh, a aspiration towards more connected health and end-to-end -end solutioning uh, of providing value beyond the pill. However, uh, the various stakeholders in that ecosystem of patients, uh, providers, provider institutions, payers, governments, and of course, uh, biopharmaceutical companies such as ourselves, we have not exactly been in alignment because digital was something nice to do, uh, but it, was, it wasn't seen as uh, something which was vital. Uh, because of COVID and the unprecedented load on care facilities that uh, COVID um, as a pandemic has caused, um, and the need for uh, doing self-triage and self-care to relieve those hospitals uh, and provide our institutions off that load, it opens up new vistas. Not only does it open up new vistas, but it also um, provides greater alignment uh, on looking at uh, value-based healthcare in a holistic perspective. So it's not just medication. Uh, it is the medication. It's the efficacy of that medication. And how much farther can we take that if we provide appropriate support, uh, both to the patients and to the providers? And this is the background in which uh, digital transformation kind of really comes to the fore. Now that we have a, a little bit more buy-in because, uh, because of this alignment between stakeholders, uh, there is also this opportunity to push the envelope and move forward. So what I mean by that as an example is uh, digital, a couple of years ago, uh, we probably would have thought of that as uh, repeat process automation, for example, and those uh, and uh, adding in a little bit of intelligence on top of that repeat process automation. So that would be things like uh, customized messaging, uh, data-driven outreach, uh, which is something that we call omnichannel at this stage. Uh, and, and that is completely fine, but now, we're coming up to uh, an arena where um, having insights, um, having the availability of insights as well as um, sign on from the various uh, stakeholders in the ecosystem provides us an opportunity to uh, transform healthcare delivery overall. So it's not just the messaging piece of it, it's the patient care piece of it. And for the first time in history, I think, uh, players uh, such as AstraZeneca pharma companies have a role to play, not only a role to play, but to lead uh, in that. So it is, uh, it is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Uh, and with that tremendous opportunity, of course, uh, come uh, pretty uh, meaningful challenges, uh, not the least of which is, of course, change management, both inside the organization as well as outside. So I think it's fantastic. And uh, just for me to uh, add that, uh, for the one who don't know this part of AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca Oncology is a, is a leader in, uh, in oncology, quite a new leader. Uh, and we have some, uh, uh, a lot of different type of uh, therapeutic area uh, where we are really in need of, uh, of partnering, understanding the, uh, the ecosystem, for example, in lung cancer, for example, in, uh, uh, in breast cancer. Uh, and, and, and again, I think we need to understand that the ecosystem, innovation ecosystem is for us key uh, to tackle. I have another question for you, uh, Hassan, on, uh, uh, based on, uh, on your previous uh, uh, points. How do you see the, the future of this collaboration? Because we will be in front of uh, 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 a lot of uh, companies, and uh, and most of these companies has uh, 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 different type of uh, technologies. If I'm just saying multiomics, disease understanding, drug design, synthesis, personalized medicine, imaging, clinical trial, where do you see the maximum impact of uh, of this new technology that, uh, as a company, we could benefit of uh, partnering? Yeah, uh, that's that's a very interesting question, David. Uh, from from my perspective, the impact could be maximized across the board. But let's look at it from uh, from the path of least resistance, or kind of what the what the uh, uh, the first kind of pathway of entry would be, and that would probably be in the clinical trials arena. And and that's because historically, uh, digital transformation in clinical trials has been happening for the past several years. Uh, it is a controlled environment. Um, of a, a cohort of patients in a controlled care setting. So it is, it, it is relatively easy, um, as, as opposed to the real world, to bring in technologies, try them out, test them out, and move them forward. And, and I think that it's, it's a wonderful 
uh, way to test out some of uh, the very innovative approaches that these startup companies will be bringing. So one of the things that has happened in healthcare is uh, we have uh, we have started with conventional approaches um, and tried to make them better. For example, uh, when we talk about oral uh, adherence, for example, oral medication adherence, and AstraZeneca is one of those companies that not only uh, manufactures uh, oral oncolytics, but uh, for the patient journey, we're also dependent on other oral medications and adherence to that uh, for those patients to have a positive outcome. Um, and oral adherence has been dependent on smart bottles and glow caps and uh, smart blister packs and those kind of things. And that has been happening for a while. And that is a good approach, but that is not the entirety of the approach. Uh, the, the smart blister pack, the smart bottle cap is one aspect of it. And what it tells us is uh, whether that particular packaging was picked up um, or whether that bottle was open or not. But there is there are other aspects that go into um, into determining the adherent order of uh, the taking of medication at the right time, et cetera. That includes, uh, that includes a survey for those patients. That includes perhaps apps, perhaps wearables. Uh, there are smart pills that are coming, coming along uh, with um, sensors in them, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that is fantastic and it is great. But if we were to release that out into the real world, we wouldn't know uh, what success would look like uh, necessarily. Um, and it would be too chaotic to do that. So, so what I would suggest is that we start in, and that is what we are doing, as, and, and by we, I mean industry overall, uh, what we are doing is starting off with these highly innovative technologies, um, starting them off in the clinical trials arena, and then having a transition over into the real world. And a couple of different points to consider over here. Number one, we are at an inflection point where, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we were using more traditional, more conventional technologies to solve medical issues. Now we're coming to a point where digital innovation in healthcare takes a life all of its own. So it's it's not going to borrow any more from best practices from other arenas. It's going to invent its own solutions for its own problems. Um, is is the first uh, piece of this? The second piece of this is kind of this uh, newly open. Um, environment, particularly in Europe. So access to health, uh, access to health data, um, the EU initiatives in digital health, um, the, the fact that uh, the EU itself is a consortium of uh, several countries in Europe. So, so the promise of uh, proving out new technologies in concert with these startup companies, particularly in Europe, is, is tremendously powerful. And I'm very excited to see where this goes. No, clearly it's it's really uh, it's really smart and uh, and really we see in the panel of the of the startups some companies working in early diagnosis uh, and digital diagnosis precision medicines and developing some uh, really interesting algorithm to uh, uh, identify patients with uh, risk of relapse uh, but also some really interesting r d uh, system that are using artificial intelligence so Hassan, uh, just uh, uh, i think it will be the the, the the last question because we 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 have um, uh, limited time how do you see uh, europe is really kind to move uh, with this uh, patient identification early diagnosis and uh, but all of this embedded in this uh, high value care or valuable health care if you if you prefer how do you how do you see this how how can astrazeneca could be really a, a, a high value care player in europe and how we can partner with all these companies um yeah that's that's a great question david thank you for that so so the the opportunity that we have um is in our agility uh, astrazeneca is a very agile company it is new to leadership in oncology uh, particularly in the field of lung cancer and that agility comes to astrazeneca a little bit naturally uh, in terms of building partnerships. So uh, a number of our medications are built and developed in partnership uh, with other companies uh, and also brought to the market uh, in uh, partnerships with various consortia. And I think that is, that is something that we pull into digital as well. We have the capabilities, especially as uh, various stakeholders within the ecosystem align 
uh, hospital systems, providers, patient groups, uh, payers, and government and policymaking uh, organizations as well uh, to, to lead and make the case for uh, digitally driven healthcare and healthcare improved outcomes. So for example, you were talking about, uh, and you know, we can uh, go through uh, several different parts of the patient journey. So, so let's start at uh, the detection and screening uh, side of things. Um, Europe is, uh, as a whole, predominantly uses uh, CT scans uh, to, um, to screen for lung cancer, which is fantastic. And I think that if we layer on um, um, a AI-driven um, layer on top of that to automatically detect um, incidental pulmonary nodules, as an example, that would be great. And that is something which is, uh, which is happening. There's a number of companies that are doing that. But the disconnect uh, is how do we ensure follow-up in the institutions? When, and by we, I mean healthcare, uh, the healthcare industry overall, right? So, so how can we facilitate uh, the follow-up uh, from detection to uh, referral back to the, uh, to the primary care physician, a referral to the medical oncologist, referral and, and connection of the, ra the radiation oncologist to the MDT, et cetera, et cetera. That is a part of digital which has a disconnect and that is that is an arena where we can add tremendous value and accelerate that. And of course, in the in the act, as we bring other uh, other parts of the ecosystem along with us, uh, make the case for uh, sustaining that change through reimbursement, through payments. Right? AstraZeneca can't do it all on its own. Um, it it needs the support of different players in the ecosystem to do that. Now we come to the treatment part um, of the patient journey, and that is where we need uh, what Ethan Bash called intense surveillance of the patients and intense surveillance of the patients is not just having an app ping them from time to time and saying, how are you feeling? Uh, what's wrong? What's right, et cetera, et cetera. But it is backed by uh, the care team and the care team providing uh, appropriate advice and intervention to those uh, patients. And what that means is integrating into the care team workflow so that they don't have additional work to do by looking at another screen to track their patients, but they have the patient um, statuses coming in uh, automatically integrated into their workflow and all they have to do is make the right decisions and kind of move from them, enabling that intense surveillance, which in turn leads to uh, improved quality of life uh, and improved overall survival. Uh, and then the third piece of this uh, is for the patients themselves, um, solving, uh, addressing uh, and solving uh, issues that the patients feel, everything from financial toxicity so to issues of motivation, uh, to their wellness uh, as well. And that is, that is uh, an opportunity where uh, different companies um, and AstraZeneca and pharmaceutical companies could certainly be one of them uh, in concert with digital players and partners uh, can reach out directly to those patients to help them with their wellness and, and help them with their outcomes. I am conscious of the time, so I'll stop talking over here uh, and see David if, uh, if that answer landed. Uh, no, I think it's perfect, and, um, and 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 I would like to thanks all the uh, all the audience because I, I think again uh, we 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 are happy to uh, listen from uh, feedback, and uh, uh, we are really proud to be part of this uh, catapult program, and uh, all the projects are doing fantastically well. We are proud to uh, have this three prize that uh, uh, that we will. Uh, um, uh, uh, that we will give to this uh, the winner, in fact, that uh, we selected. But again, uh, I think it's uh, all are doing a, a fantastic job and we are proud to be part of uh, this oncology uh, journey. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, David and Hassan, for joining us at Catapult and the Digital Health Semifinals. And now, after an exciting day, a full of inspiring pitches, um, some amazing startups, the moment has arrived for us to be able to start our Catapult Awards Ceremony. Yes, everybody is here. The jury have deliberated and decided the sponsors are here with their prizes. And now it's a great pleasure for me to give the floor to the very best person to lead our award ceremony, Kurt Huller. Kurt, over to you. Thank you so much, Alison. And indeed, it's a, it's a great pleasure after these three days, uh, now on the final day, to announce 
the semi-finalist uh, semi-final winners uh, that will proceed and will move on to the finals. But before that, uh, let me just recap what we what we did in the in the last couple of days and uh, also today. So uh, we have seen a lot of great startups, but we also have seen very interesting and uh, very important keynotes and um, insights. So thank you, David and Hassan, for for sharing your your insights about. Uh, the importance of uh, what we what we actually do and uh, what what patient impact also matters. Thank you also so much um, to Marco from from the DMAC um, and pointing out the uh, the DIGAS uh, in Germany. And actually, we want to develop that further into a European uh, DHAS digital health applications uh, that we want to roll out. And let me just briefly point out on that, because I think on the day where we talk about digital health, that is really important. So EIT Health really made the connection between the German health insurance uh, or healthcare sector, especially the German Ministry of Health and um, the French Ministry of Health. And uh, we explained our French director, Jean-Marc Bourré, uh, explained to uh, the French colleagues how well the German system functioned. And then immediately at one of our events in Paris, President Macron announced that he just wants to replicate the German DIGA system also for France. And that was kind of an initial um, kickoff for uh, joint meetings. And um, right after that, we had a follow-up meeting with nine countries, representatives from nine countries in Germany, where we discussed how we could roll out the German DIGA system into those nine countries. So we will use the next six months to really see how we can have um, a system that, that leads to a single market so that digital health applications can be prescribed and reimbursed across countries. So something that is still a clear disadvantage compared to other large markets, large single markets like the US, we want to catch up, especially in that very fast, very quick digital health uh, applications market. So uh, looking forward to see what's coming up next year, but uh, just want to also say here in the semifinals at this very important moment that we are also working on improving the framework conditions for many of the startups that have pitched today. I'd like also to point out one great success story that we had. Um, I, on the day one, I announced that Fagomate was acquired by Biontech, but I also want to want to say and point out that one of the digital health winners of 2020 was acquired, um, and that was Patch AI. So that is um, two companies from the 2020 batch that got acquired and um, really showed that what they invented uh, and what they drove forward um, was super much valued by large corporates um, that now took them on board. And um, both founders are still on board uh, with those companies leading their, their company, their field. So uh, great, uh, quite, a, quite a success story. I'd like to use these days also to uh, emphasize the purpose, why we are doing that. And um, sometimes it's positive messages that we can share. Sometimes it's sad messages that we have to share and that give us still inspiration to work harder. And um, therefore, I'd like to share with you that one of our top mentors that we used in so many programs, he's also an investor. He has been an investor, passed away uh, during these semifinals. Um, I'm talking about Derek Young. Many of you might know him. Um, he has contributed in Wildcard, in Amplifier, um, I think also in Health Catapult, in GoldTrack. He was one of the EC members, so he was uh, extremely well connected to our EIT Health community, and we got quite shocked that he that he passed away far too early. But um, that should be an inspiration for us, and it should be a motivation and driver to work further, because um, in so many cases, the sudden death and the and the the people passing away um, could be avoided if we would have the right treatment, or if we would have the right early diagnosis and prevention. And that's why we are here all together to make our society a bit more, a bit healthier and uh, a bit more uh, resilient. So 
Let's see whom we have today, um, or we have seen the pitches already, but let's see who um, was the most impressive for our jury. But before we go to our jury, I uh, want to see which startup, which company, which pitch was most impressive to our sponsors. And for that, I'd like to ask Jared Saul uh, from Amazon Web Services to come on stage to announce, um, first of all, what Amazon Web Services, and I think especially for the digital health category, these credits will be extremely relevant and valuable, but uh, what you're awarding and um, what companies can expect. And I did the joke already the last two days um, with, with Guy Spiegelman, your colleague. Um, so now I will do that with you again. Uh, you didn't have, you are the only one the only sponsor who did, didn't have to remember the names of the companies, but you, because you will award all companies. But Jared, um, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. That's right. And, and that's exactly why we decided to offer a prize to everybody so we wouldn't have to remember any names. Um, uh, just uh, building on your joke there. Uh, yeah, so I lead our work with startups around the world, and it's a real privilege to be part of this event, uh, and I know it's been a long, uh, arduous process for these startups. Um, I myself am a startup founder, so I really appreciate uh, the work and dedication um, and how hard it can be uh, and all the great things that competitions like this can bring. Um, so it's a real privilege to be participating, and I want to thank you for including Amazon Web Services in this, uh, in this competition uh, and giving us a chance to work with these, uh, these great companies. Um, and most of these companies are new to me. I actually got a chance to meet AZ Med at RSNA this week, but I haven't had a chance to work with any of the others. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, in terms of prizes, uh, we are happy to offer all participants um, some amount of uh, prize. So for the finalists, we'll be giving $25,000 uh, of service credits that allow you to build uh, and experiment on our technology stack uh, on our dime. Uh, and we'll marry that with two hours of um, engineering uh, consultation time uh, and also <clears throat> two hours of business men mentorship from uh, folks at AWS. Um, and then for the semifinal finalists, we're pleased to give $10,000 in credits uh, and an hour of engineering consultation and an hour of business mentorship. Um, so I really look forward to working with each of these companies uh, and lending our resources and help you think through how to leverage technology and Amazon Web Services to build and scale your businesses. Jared, thank you so much for announcing the winners and uh, or announcing the what they what they get, and uh, congratulations to everyone who pitched today for receiving this uh, prize. Then let's proceed to AstraZeneca. David de la Monica, great to have you on stage again. Yes, guys. So um, I'm David de la Monica working for AstraZeneca Oncology. So um, I'm, I'm really happy to be part of this uh, journey. And, and, and you know how I love this uh, EITL's work and uh, all the fantastic connection that you have in uh, all the countries. So for AstraZeneca, digitalization of, uh, of healthcare and in oncology is a huge topic. And, and this digitalization in this uh, uh, cancer patient journey and physician journey will play a tremendous role in the in the coming years. So uh, today, what we will do, we'll give the prize and uh, a prize where we will push the the selected winner uh, inside AstraZeneca, connect with specific coaching uh, uh, in terms of uh, regulatory device regulations, etc., and make sure that uh, you have the relevant contact inside this uh, this huge company. Uh, uh, to um, uh, valorize your uh, your project uh, and see how we can uh, work with you in the future. So the the winner is Mentalis. So uh, just one word on uh, Mentalis. First, I think it's a fantastic company, uh, and I really like the way that they uh, moved this uh, this project in Germany. And Kurt, you you mentioned. Uh, this with this uh, specific uh, uh, environment in Germany that I hope will move in, uh, in Europe very soon. Uh, but Mentalis is really providing a huge service in terms of uh, 
discharge of patients, maintenance of, uh, of, uh, of patients under treatment. So uh, this is a high, highly important topic because patients need this type of services. But it's the, long, the, the road is long because we need to, to prove. So I'm really happy that we, we, we will support you in the, in the coming weeks and months to, uh, to move this project forward. Thank you very much. We are very happy and honored and looking forward to collaborate with you. My pleasure. Congratulations, Jürgen. Well done. Very well done. Thank I'm you very much. To, to see yeah. the results. Thank you. Then let's proceed to the next prize. And um, for the next award, I'd like to invite Sofia Kuto de Rocha uh, from Luciadas, uh, Luci Luciadas uh, to, to uh, come on stage. Sofia, please. Hello, thank you very much. And congratulations, first of all, to Catapult for all the organization, for all the pathway that is doing here. So, Lucia, this, we are really, really happy, uh, not only as a group of hospitals, but also as part of United Health Care Group, uh, to be in this initiative. Like, I'm, um, I'm the Chief Transformation Officer, so I lead Innovation Digital Transformation. I couldn't be happier to be here in this environment. And besides, I'm myself an alumni from EIT Health, so I know how is it to be in the startup um, mindset and also the startup world. So, Lucia, this high care prize is focused on um, transfer of technology in healthcare. So, we give some hours of 12 hours of supporting on that and then some extra hours on our DPO and our Chief Information Security Officer knowledge because we know that sometimes this is one of the problems to uh, enter in a group of hospitals or in a large uh, healthcare group. And with no further ado, I am super happy to announce our winner, which is Avatar Medical. We are looking forward to part them. Congratulations, Elodie. Well done. Hi. Th thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Well, thank you very much. That's very relevant to us because we have to integrate with the uh, hospital IT. I guess we will benefit a lot from from the price. Thank you. We're super happy. Thank you very much also for your all work to have these solutions and we are looking forward to partner. Congratulations, Elodie. And um, congrats also to the French team. Um, everyone will be happy and celebrate the French company. The first one was German. Now the second one is a uh, French company. Congratulations and thank you. Now the next one, the next prize uh, will be announced by Sharon Lamb from McDermott, Will and Emery. Sharon, please, the floor is yeah. yours. Oh, hello. Um, yeah, as you say, Sharon Lamb, I'm a health partner at McDermott, Will and Emery. I'm in our London office and on behalf of all of my colleagues at McDermott, uh, we're just delighted to have sponsored these awards. It's really been a fantastic experience. I lead our international digital health practice and the, the entries in this category were extremely strong. It, it was really hard to make a choice. Um, all of the product, all of the projects showed real innovation in the delivery of digital healthcare. And so may I say at the outset, just congratulations to everyone who entered um, really fantastic and we wish you the best of luck on your journeys. But there must um, unfortunately just be one winner and I'm pleased to say that the award for the digital health category goes to ASMED. ASMED delivers AI powered solutions with the aim of optimizing the workflow of doctors and improving their performance, allowing doctors to spend more time on what is most important, the patients. And we wish you the very best of congratulations. Julia, congratulations. Thank you very much. How do you feel? Thank you. Thank you, that's great. Thank you very much to everyone. So that's two French companies already awarded in the beginning of, of this ceremony. So um, congratulations. Macron will be happy to hear to hear how successful these companies have been. Super. Um, then let's move on to the next award. Um, no, actually, sorry. Uh, the sponsor awards are done. So now we can proceed to the jury awards. And uh, in order to share a bit the feedback, um, share some insights from the jury discussions, I would like to invite Sonia Wilkins um, to the 
on on stage to give us some to share some insights, some thoughts. Um, what was the discussion in the jury meeting? Sonia, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to thank uh, again the, all the teams for the great pitches and presentations. Uh, the jury had done a lot of discussion, as already others said. It was not easy to choose um, who will be the final, who are the finalists. Five minutes are not much time to present a complex business content, so that was um, the, the hardest part to really get everything done in the five minutes and convince the jury to be on the top list. And we know that, uh, but everyone did a great job and I hope you all had a fruitful day, could network, connect, and uh, that is very important as we all know for startups as well. For me, it was a pleasure to see all the different pitches but very, very different content and discuss with all the jury members afterwards. So at that point, thank you to EAT Health having me as a jury member and thanks again to all the teams. Yeah, but in the end, we had to, we had to uh, make a decision. And um, so um, hope, I hope that uh, the ones who won't do it to the finals don't lose motivation because definitely it uh, was, was a close job. So it was not easy to really make a range here. So a ranking. So now, yeah, uh, give, a, give back again and thank you again for having me. Thank you, Sonia. And indeed, everyone who made it to the semifinals is already a winner. And uh, can everyone can consider themselves as uh, one of the top startups in Europe in the digital health space. So um, and everyone got already a prize from Amazon Web Service. Everyone got uh, training, pitch training, super mentoring uh, from our super mentors. So everyone who was here today is already a winner. But of course, um, there is some companies that will proceed to the, our finals. Um, the finals will take place in Stockholm in May 24th, 25th. And um, now we will first announce the runners up. So that's the four companies that didn't make it among the top three, but it's the ones that uh, still are invited to go in person to Stockholm to pitch live on stage and um, to, to be connected to investors, to be promoted through our networks. So uh, certainly a big opportunity to get further. And without further ado, I will start to announce the first of the four. The first, the first one is located in Germany and is, we have already seen them, Mentalis. Jürgen, congratulations for going to Stockholm. Thank you very much. Looking forward to traveling again. Super. Yeah, I've, I've seen you pitching already several times now and you have been part of a couple of ERT Health programs. So very much looking forward to meeting you again uh, in person in Stockholm. Thank you so much and um, enjoy the, Great. the super mentoring till then. Take, take all the best out of the super mentoring that you get to really fine tune the pitch, to fine tune the business model and get everything to the point. Thank you. With that, we'll come to number two out of the four runners up. And the number two is located in Spain. And I'd like to congratulate Teresa from Exeos. Teresa, congratulations and very well done. Thank you very much. I'm really, I'm super happy. So thank you very much. Very much looking forward to seeing you then in Stockholm and um, enjoy also the okay, super mentoring. I look forward. Enjoy the super mentoring that you will get till then. So you still have a couple of months to, to fine tune everything. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Then the third one, the third one is coming from UK, Amara Therapeutics. Congratulations to Brendan. Very well done. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank you. And very much looking forward to then seeing you in Stockholm. I hope you enjoyed working with your super mentor as well. Yeah, it was a brilliant experience and really helped us at this stage right now. So thank you. Super. Excellent. And now we will come to the fourth one, to the last one in the group of the runners up. And this one goes south. 
Congratulations to Maria Teresa from Hexel. Congratulations. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm <laughs> Alessandra Pacilli from Hexel. Maria Teresa oh. is now traveling, so she asked me to participate. And uh, we really look forward to meet you in Stockholm. That's super. super. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you so much for joining and um, um, say hello to the whole, to the whole team. Congratulate the whole team and enjoy also the super mentoring for that. See you in Stockholm. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now we come to the final three. So that's the three that will have the possibility to pitch um, live on stage like the others, but in the plenary session. So when all the EIT health community is sitting together, um, the last time we did that live was in 2019, December 2019 in Paris, where we had 1000 representatives from EIT health, all the corporates, all the big pharma, the big uh, medtech and digital health companies, the top universities, university hospitals, the payers, uh, healthcare providers, um, insurance companies, accelerators, um, incubators. So all the all the groups uh, of of institutions and people uh, you always wanted to pitch to as a startup uh, in one room. So to announce, and of course, uh, last but not least, it is also the prize money. It is forty thousand euro for the winner, twenty thousand euro for the second, and ten thousand euro for the third one. And as in the group of the runners up, uh, the announcement has nothing to do with the ranking. The ranking will be done in Stockholm. So now we just announce in random order, the ranking um, of the winners will be decided in Stockholm. And also the audience award will be decided by the audience and will be provided by the audience in Stockholm. The Alex Custer audience award means um, that the logo of the company will be displayed at the New York Times Square, the Nasdaq Tower. So that's really an amazing opportunity for everyone to get global visibility through that through that marketing um, marketing uh, topic and marketing thing. So um, let's proceed to the final three. And the first out of the group of the podium finalists is Ebenbild, K. Congratulations to Germany. Congratulations to K for being one of the top three. Thanks a lot. I mean, this is I'm I'm at a loss of words. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Looking forward to the finals and pitching there in front of all these people. Thanks a lot. Very good. Excellent. You certainly will get some training like all the others, some super mentoring oh, in order to get there. Um, I hope you you will benefit from that. I hope you already benefited so far, but obviously the pitch was convincing uh, to the jury, so it looks like it was was uh, well invested. We did so much. A looking lot. forward. I mean, I think long. Looking forward to seeing you in Stockholm. Thank you. The second one out of the group of three uh, who will make it um, to the to the podium to the plenary session is. We already have seen him before. A cement, Julien from France. Congratulations for making it into the final three. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very looking forward to go to, to Stockholm. First time for me, so I'm very looking forward to, to, to pitch there. That's great. Super. Sounds amazing. Very much looking forward to seeing you there live on stage and then also seeing the outcome of um, all your all your connections that you will make. Congratulations and uh, safe travels. And now there's only one left, only one company that will go to Stockholm. And this company is Brightlobe from UK. Shivani, congratulations for making it among the final three. Well done. Thank you, very, thank you very much. I'm so incredibly honored to be part of such uh, a competition with, with such brilliant startups. Um, I've been really inspired myself by the other people that I've 
I've seen pitch. And I also would like to extend a special thank you to my super mentor who provided his in invaluable advice as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. That's great to hear that you also benefited from the super mentoring. So that's that's the basic idea that you don't have to go through everything alone, but that you get well prepared. So I'm also very much looking forward to seeing you in Stockholm, live on stage with, I don't know if we will be able to have a thousand people in the in the in the plenary session, but um, certainly if the conditions allow, we will we will try to bring everyone possible to to the finals. Thank you so much. Safe travels then, and uh, have a good time. Have uh, take care uh, for the next six months, so that we can meet all again in Stockholm. Thank you. Yeah, with that, we have announced all the winners. Uh, we have announced all the sponsorship prizes. With that, I'd like to I'd like to conclude. Um, I have spoken a lot about what we can expect in Stockholm in May. Um, so the price money, of course, the connections, which is the most important thing. Of course, also um, the Alex Casta Audience Award um, with the logo on the New York Times Square sponsored by Nasdaq. But if you guys wondered if it now takes until May, until the finals um, have finished, um, does it does it um, give a is there a possibility to to get to apply for the next round? And yes. You don't have to wait until the finals are over because we will start to take in the new batch. So the next cohort of companies for the health catapult of the upcoming years, um, the application will start already in January. So we will start rather early with the process. We will get the companies in. So the application will be published uh, most probably uh, beginning, uh, sorry, most probably end of January, I think. And then, um, um, the deadline will be uh, one or two months later so that you can apply. And then we will do the regional selections during the year. Uh, we will do the semifinals and the event, the finals um, of the next intake will most probably be um, again uh, Q2 uh, of 2023. So that's our current plan. Get ready. Don't miss the deadline. Uh, beginning of next year, you can apply to get into the next intake for the health catapult. I'd like also to link back again to what we started this morning. Those of you who have been on board since nine o'clock this morning uh, might remember that I had a brief conversation in the beginning of this day with Keith Sequera, uh, who is head of unit at EIC, the European Innovation Council. And uh, we briefly discussed the fast track. So that means that the companies that win the finals um, the, that our first, second or third winner usually get on the fast track um, into the EIC programs. And the EIC means um, it's a, a grant of up to 2.5 million euro plus additional blended financing from EIB, which totals up to up to 15 million euro. And um, the companies, the winners of the health catapult, um, the first three winners have a chance to get on that fast track. That doesn't mean that they already get awarded, but they can skip the first three selection steps um, of the whole process so that um, they, they have a much higher likelihood to, to make it till the end. That's actually a nice outlook for all those that have been awarded in the last three days. This is the last day um, of the whole series. We have started with biotech. Uh, we got through medtech yesterday. We closed with digital health. I pointed out uh, how EIT Health will contribute to also make the framework conditions better for digital health solutions and their reimbursement uh, about their prescription as a medical um, device. So that is that is really um, a great future for digital health application and uh, digital health solutions in Europe. With that, I'd like to just very briefly say Thank you to so many people who have contributed to all the startups that have pitched live on stage and who have practiced and trained their pitches quite some time over month and month. I'd like to thank the jury members who took a lot of time and who would have loved to have even more Q and A's to all the companies. I'd like uh, to thank all the participants, all the people out there 
who joined our three-day session from morning till evening. Among them, investors, EIT Health partners like corporates or university and university hospital members, clusters, incubators, accelerators. So really thank you to everyone who was part of that amazing event. And last but not least, of course, um, Alison will do that again a bit more explicitly, but I just want to very briefly say thank you to um, everyone who helped behind the scenes. Um, the Annas um, from, from Cup Digital and Medical Valley, Jonas, Arangsha, uh, thank you so much for organizing the whole, the whole uh, program, the whole um, health catapult over the last years. Thank you so much to Katie, Mike, Joe, um, in the mission control room. Yesterday, we had a little virtual tour through the mission control room. Um, they didn't allow me to show to to get you all out there on the on the on the tour and uh, show you a bit how the mission control room in the back end looks like. But it's amazing how they organized all the all the technical issues and all the technical challenges that we had. But um, in the end, everything worked out super well and super fine. So thank you so much for professional support to the whole team from Ashfield. And last but not least, Alison. Thank you so much for guiding us through these three days. So it was a real pleasure to, to uh, be here with you. You have uh, so many insights as a pitch trainer since 2019. You already worked uh, with many of the companies before. And uh, now you took the, the opportunity to also moderate the whole three days series. Thank you so much for guiding us through. And with that, back to you, Alison. Thank you, Kurt. It's been a fantastic three days. That's just uh, absolutely wonderful. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, uh, because we have now come to the end, not only of digital health, but of course, Catapult, uh, the biotech, medtech and Catapult uh, and digital health, excuse me. And over those three days, we have um, discovered inspiring innovations, bold business plans and, of course, powerful pitches. It's been fantastic and congratulations to all of the startups, uh, remembering that you are the top, the best startups in each category in Europe today. To the winners um, who have been announced um, on the three days, we look forward to seeing you in Stockholm and of course the hard work continues. We of course wish to say uh, lots of thank yous to many people and we would like to start with thanking our sponsors. And of course, our sponsors are AstraZeneca, Amazon Web Services, EG Technology, Luciadas, McDermott, Will and Emery, Merck and Nasdaq. A very big thank you to you all indeed. And equally, a very big thank you to the people who have worked very hard, who had a difficult, challenging choice to make choices to make and that is our jury for today Susie, Natalie, Diane, Sonia, Catherine and Miguel. Thank you so much on behalf of everybody for your work, your great questions and your um, excellent uh, decisions this evening. Now of course um, the partners uh, are Without, without exception, we want to say a really big thank you to all the partners. Now that means all of the uh, fantastic people in the different uh, health kicks of EIT Health. Uh, a particularly big, big thank you to Anna uh, and Manuel in Cap Digital, to Jonas and Anna in Medical Valley, and uh, uh, to Aransa in Bio AM. So you, you know exactly what the messages are. Thank you very, very much. And equally, uh, a very big thank you to all of the delegates who have joined us, perhaps for the three days, perhaps just for one of the days, but thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And we look forward to seeing you again, of course, in Stockholm. Um, I think I have remembered, no, I have nearly forgotten somebody. We want to also say a particularly big, tons and tons of thanks to everybody in mission control, as as uh, Kurt said, this morning we had a, a whiz round with the camera, and it's uh, it's been fantastic working with mission control. Particularly big thank yous to Mike, to Joe, to Katie, 
um, with all the amazing agility and responsiveness. And it's been not only professional, but also great fun. And thank you very much for letting it all work so smoothly. So what remains to be said? Well, we look forward to seeing all of you again next year in Stockholm. And in the meantime, stay safe and well, have a lovely evening and see you soon. Goodbye.